Welcome to the Indie Kid Lit Podcast. Join Marty Dumas and Elena Page on their quest to help children's and middle grade authors find the right audience and sell more books. Hi, and welcome to the Indie Kid Lit Podcast. I'm Marty Dumas, and I'm here with my excellent co-host, Elena Page, and we are here today to do a little bonus episode because there is something that has been floating around in our community in the indie author space, and particularly in the indie kidlet author space that we were hoping to be able to have a little chat about and um, maybe help some way. I'm, I'm not sure. We'll see how that part actually um, goes. But um, one of the things that we noticed was that um, a lot of times when lots of uh, children's book authors and middle grade authors come together, that um, we're super excited to see each other and to talk about what's happening, but that the conversation immediately negative and that people are um, kind of approaching uh, this work from the standpoint where they're like they're starting off the conversation by saying it's totally impossible. Everyone else has it so much easier. And um, I happened to know that um, our good friend Elena is a person who works in the mindset space. And so I thought it would be cool for me and then therefore maybe for other people too to be able to have a conversation about author mindset and to pick her brain about that a little bit. So is that about right, Elena? Yeah, we want to change the perception around it. And as a united group, start thinking that we can do it. And then we can all do it together because you only get as far sometimes as the people you walk that path with. Um, I, I do believe that when a little bit of all of us, you know, um, falls are inevitable, so we're not against. But, um, you know, the, the more we can start having that positive attitude and approach, um, I think the, the better we'll all be in the long run. And you're right, it is just mindset, which is good news. If it was something else, it would be bad news. But if it's just that you have to change your mind, then hooray, you can do something about it. So yeah, that's kind of the theme of this episode. Yeah. So we were saying a little bit before we actually clicked the on air button uh, a little bit about, and I don't actually know where I got this from, somewhere out in the universe of the internet about people being the average of the five people that they spend the most time with. And I think about that a lot as I'm thinking about the authors that um, I'm spending time with, like people who are um, really positive that they are going to have a strong impact and be successful in the way that they define it. I'm really looking for that when I'm looking for authors that um, I want to be with a lot. Um, and that for me is a professional goal, but I know that it has, its roots in this bigger idea of uh, like, I don't, what is it? Law of attraction? Like people bringing to, I don't even know what that is. Like I'm talking about stuff that I have no idea about, but well, like <laughs> the idea that you're yeah. bringing things to your, like toward yourself, like with your attitude with your thoughts like what's like look, bring me back into like a uh, like a real direction so I'm not making stuff up I don't know well there's a few things in there so you know like part of it is the hundredth monkey theory and you know the hundredth oh, monkey is an theory. excellent name I do not know this theory right. you don't know this theory oh well I'm no, probably or completely at least I don't know the name of it that's awesome <laughs> I'm, I'm completely monkey. misquoting it but um but it's you know like it's that theory that um you know, when a hundred, um, the, the, it's actually real research. Now, I'm pro, again, I'm, I might not have an exact, and there's a few different versions of how it's written, but when, like, monkeys didn't know how to open coconuts, and there's another version where it's bananas, but I'm sure it's coconuts, and they didn't know how to open the coconut and actually, you know, eat it. 
Um, so one monkey worked it out, right? Like now I want you to think of this story as I'm talking about it as though the monkeys are authors, right? Children's book authors, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, one monkey worked out how to open the coconut and then, you know, showed another monkey and then that other monkey showed another monkey and, you know, this is a real theory um, and an anthropology theory, although they're not people, but you know what I'm saying. Um, as soon as a hundred monkeys could open that coconut, all the monkeys around the entire world worked it out. And so, so that they, sounds yeah. like suspiciously like magic, but I, now that you're saying this, I um, feel like I have heard this before and that it's like, that it has more to do with um, statistics than it does um, about, like if a monkey separately can work out how to do it, then um, it means that they've all gotten to that point. Is that what that, that is? Well, well, what it means is that there's a, what, they've, what the scientist um, who discovered that, um, and I've completely forgotten his name, but I will put it in the show notes in case you're very fascinated to do some research on it. Um, what he found was that there's like a morphic field. There is some field around us where we influence each other. It's what you were saying earlier, you know, um, how we, we all come down. We don't want to, but we do. We're influenced by the people we hang around with, um, the people we get on Facebook. You know, you just read a message and you don't want to, but it does alter how you're now feeling or thinking about that topic. Um, and that's because we apparently communicate through these morphic fields. Um, and so it is a form of science. I think it probably falls in physics, which some people debate is not real science. Um, <laughs> you know, and, but it, there's definitely a biological aspect to it. Um, and it's when a certain amount of people do something, it kind of spreads. So I think the number is like point one percent of a population has to you know be into Jaden to Sant and then all the rest want to read it too you know like it's that's actually the principle but coming back to us as authors essentially supporting each other and working together um, when one of us gets ahead it helps all of us but eventually when you know 0.1% of us start getting ahead. Um, and I like to think to some extent that's in the indie space. Um, not that we're separate from traditionally published authors, but often we face different um, mindset challenges. As indie authors, we kind of have a bit more insecurity perhaps because we don't have, you know, some big New York agency going, wow, your book is amazing, um, and then works with us for seven, eight months to make it even more amazing. We're, we're often kind of going out and, and guessing our way through, which is, you know, the reality. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question completely, but that was part of what you were I, asking. I think it does. And interestingly enough, um, I end up spending a lot of time with um, uh, children's book authors who are like across the spectrum of uh, publishing. So some who are actually self-publishing who are doing everything themselves and some who are more indie publishing who are um, like themselves, yes, but also working with a team of people, illustrators and page designers and stuff like that. And then um, people who are um, doing uh, small presses and micro presses and then also people who are working with larger presses. And um, I find that that people who are on the working with larger presses and of it um, are also not in a strong positive mindset, okay. um, which is really interesting. But I and I think it's um, a mindset of like very low expectation. Um, so like they're like happy to get a couple of thousand dollars and then move on. Whereas like I think yeah. that um, like I would love to be with the people who are expecting fully expecting to make their full-time living um, from this and um, who are uh, moving toward that, um, even if they're not there at this time. So, um, but I, I I definitely agree that like there's a, to a certain extent like that um, it's so much easier if you've had a lot of feedback from people telling you that your work is good, it's possible for you to have a, a, a more positive mindset, but also, I don't know that that always works because um, you maybe start feeling like people are just 
yesing you, right? Um, I feel like that sometimes actually at my writers group where I'm like, oh no, now these people like me, which is cool. Like I like people to like me, but also I don't want them to like me so much that they just tell me that everything that I write is good because that can't possibly be true. So then <laughs> like I need to find a new feedback circle. So sometimes that like, um, yeah positive reinforcement I don't know that seems weird but sometimes that positive reinforcement doesn't end up making your mindset permanently positive which kind of points to the fact that it has more to do with you than to do with other people which I think is part of what you were saying before yeah and it's also like you said to do with your expectations so you know there's another famous story which you may or may not have heard of of um the hot dog stall owner and, you know, the hot dog stall owner goes out every day and says, hot dogs, hot dogs. And he just sells so many hot dogs, he can't keep up. So he goes home and um, says to his son, we need to buy a new stand or, you know, whatever the, what do you guys call that in the US? You know, the, the hot yeah, dog. The cart, the stand, it's good. The yeah. cart. We need to get a new one. You know, the demand is so big, I can't, you know, we, let's get a new one. And the son says, are you crazy? There's a recession going on. No one buys hot dogs. And so the next day, the stall owner, you know, goes out, the dad goes out and says, hot dogs, hot dogs, and no one buys any. So, you know, like that's actually like once again showing, and we hear it all the time, like me as a very brand new author, I don't know if you did, but when I first came into this a year ago, um, you know, I, I thought, wow, it's fantastic, you know, like I'm going to write kids' books, it's going to be awesome, and started listening to podcasts and hearing all these things about like, oh, you can, it can be amazing, you can make heaps of money uh, unless you're a children's book author. And I'm like, huh? You know, like there was Facebook ad stuff and the, this company was saying, you know, we can run it all for you. And I'm like, wow, you know, I might, I might get this Facebook place to, you know, this organization to do my Facebook ads. And then um, they said, oh, sorry, we don't do children's books because they don't sell. And I'm like, huh? You know, like this is what I, you know, consistently heard as a, as a new author. And so then I started going, do I want to write children's books if I'm going to put all this time, effort and money in and not get any of that money back? So, you know, like that already set me up with certain expectations of what was going to happen. Um, so sometimes it's better not knowing any of this stuff. Um, but once you do, you cannot unknow it. So, you know, what do you then do? And, you know, ultimately it's about making very conscious decisions of, you know, who you're going to believe and which... I mean, we, you know, we interview authors, we speak to different authors and some of them say it's tough and we get that feel for that. And then others are like, no, it's, it's cool. It's like any other business it takes time, you know, but that thing's going good. And I'm like, wow, maybe it really is more to do with the mindset. And like I said at the beginning, I really do hope it is to do with the mindset because that means that if you just change your views, your perceptions, the belief systems that you have, um, you know, you might be the next J.K. Rowling, but even if you're not, you'll sell more books and ultimately that's, and entertain more children, more young people, which is the whole point. I love how easily you just rattled off, you know, your thoughts, your belief systems, <laughs> your mindset, just change that. <laughs> so is your question, how do I change my... <laughs> I think... I think, well, let's, let me, let me ask you a different question. And then maybe that'll like lead us into the, like, how would you do that? So like, what is, do you think um, the like best or the most helpful, maybe prosperous might be um, a good word for that mindset for uh, authors to kind of approach, to use in kind of approaching their work? Well, first of all, I think it's important that your mindset be your own. And that's really critical because, you know, what we see is we see the gurus out there um, and it's like even in my, you know, counselling, helping people life, um, what happens is people turn up and they're like, I want to be you. And I'm like, no, you know, like there's only one me and trust me, you don't want to be me. Um, but it's, uh, you know, we tend to want to copy the people that we think are successful. And inevitably what I see happens is that people fail in doing that because you can only really be you. 
So, you know, ultimately, I think it's much more useful for you to decide, you know, who you are, what will work for you, who you want to be, what's your definition of success. Um, and, you know, certainly acknowledging the, the dark parts of yourself or the limiting or negative parts of yourself as also important. You know, it is not about um, walking around, you know, saying positive affirmations until, you know, like you sort of believe it. I know that's a theory and it's a wonderful theory. I'm not saying that isn't true. Um, I've many people that put the sticket notes all through their bathroom and around their house um, and, you know, like believe it or think they believe it. But unfortunately, the, the brain has that subconscious part of it. And, you know, for all of us, without an exception, there's going to be things that happen to us at school, um, at work, with our parents, with our siblings, with our friends. Um, that created negative beliefs. So it takes three events to create a negative belief. You didn't get what you wanted for Christmas. You got a lot of other great things, but not that, you know, the car that you wanted, <laughs> the electronic little car, because your parents couldn't afford it. Um, whatever. Um, but, you know, three times and then there's that belief system I can't actually have what I want so it's just as important to recognize when a negative belief system is undermining something that you're trying to create so if you've you know decided that you do want to have anything you want and you can have it and then you're getting a bit, you know, like just not feeling good about thinking that or trying to make it happen. You know, obstacles are still coming up in your path. And now it's not that the obstacles coming up because you believe you can't have what you want, but how you react to that obstacle is because you believe you can't really have what you want. So, you know, if, if you now believe you can have whatever you want and you make no sales today, you you would be like, Yeah, it's important to have the both of them and going back to your original question to really identify the belief systems that you want to have. You don't have to believe what other people believe. You know, you're allowed to keep some of your own negative beliefs. Some negative beliefs work in your favour sometimes, right? Like you might say, you know, I, I, I lose a lot of money when I take risks. And so you might get there a little slower than the person next door who's doing it, you know, taking big risks and losing stuff. But that might be a belief system that actually serves you. It sort of depends on you, though, yeah? So I would never, to a client, I, might, I often sound contradictory because I never give the same viewpoint or advice to the same two clients in a row, right? It just depends on, on you. So start with you and just starting to get a sense of how to do that. Now, I'm sorry that I'm still rattling on, but, um, you know, a, a really nice way to do that um, can be that, um, like for me, what I personally do is um, it's really having a growth mindset, right? not a fixed mindset. So in a, in a growth mindset, you want to challenge yourself. You want those limiting beliefs and emotions and issues to show up, right? Which is why, for example, you might see me on various podcasts, sometimes being very confident and amazing, and other days seeming like, I don't believe in myself at all, <laughs> right? And you're like, wow, is she the same person? But that's because, you know, I'm, I'm always challenging myself. I'm always wanting to grow. So one of the things that I do is in the morning, I do like sort of a little bit of free journaling. I don't, it's a bit like the morning pages, but I don't have a set number of pages. I just do until it feels right. And what it does is it brings stuff to my awareness because you cannot change what you are not aware of, right? And, you know, it's common that we're all aware of each other's issues, but because we're such nice people, we often don't share share those things with each other um and i you know say to the people that know me like tell me tell me
Spiel von Wings aus Dübel. Tell me. Um, which I do regularly, may I just add, um, and lie to myself all the time, we all do, mainly to stay safe because, you know, we don't want to be hurt or to fail. We don't like it. Um, it's just very normal human thing. So I do that. And then after I do that, I, um, I write some of those kind of affirmations, but I write them as though they're in the here and now. So I'll say I am, I have, um, it's very important because the brain only works on what it thinks is currently in existence, going back to your law of attraction. It, the mm. brain creates what it believes it already is. So, you know, like, you know, mine will be like, um, I am a full-time fiction author. And, of course, I'm not. <laughs> but that's what it says, right? Um, and, you know, I, I am writing two, three hours a day. You know, I am happy and healthy and full of energy. My family is happy, just anything and everything that comes to me for the day. And I pay attention to the themes, right? Because if I write it every day, there's a part of me that's like, I will never be a full-time fiction author, right? Like I'm kind of, so it's, it reveals things to me as much as it isn't just me going, I am a full-time fiction author. <laughs> Do you know, like I am, um, you know, hurry up and give it to me. It's, 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 in, it's in me to create it. And the only obstacle is really myself. So, you know, when I write that, I then go, well, I could be a full-time fiction author today. So why am I not a full-time fiction author, right? And it brings up my stuff. Like my stuff might say, because I, I need money to pay for illustrations and, you know, like I need money and, um, you know, I'm not good enough to be full-time and, God, then I'd have to go visit schools and can I do that? So, you know, all these little things that really the things we avoid, we just keep avoiding until we see them and look at them. And then the last thing I do is um, I spend a few minutes visualising that that is actually occurring right now. And you use all of your five senses. So I imagine, you know, what am I seeing? How do I feel when I'm sitting down typing? And it's effortless and um, joyful and all the good feelings. And what am I seeing? What am I hearing? What is my mind saying, you know, as though it is here now? Um, and believe it or not, it, it does begin to take effect. It might take a bit of time, so it's not kind of an instantaneous thing, but it does begin to shift your mindset because you start to identify where you want your mindset to be and where it is right now. All right. So that, I feel like, is a lot of really practical advice. Um, do you have other, I'm sorry to make you, you're now the, um, interviewee. Hello. Um, do you have, so I heard in that, no, 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 it's good. This is good. Yeah. Um, so, um, I heard in that, um, about morning pages and what you're not calling daily affirmations, but what I would have translated as daily affirmations, um, where you're saying, okay, these are the things that I want. And so I'm going to say them now and in the present. Um, and that that has been helpful for you. Like, are there other things that you do that or that you've seen other people do that maybe we could copy or try in our lives? There's a lot of things. There's heaps and heaps of stuff, right? Like there's heaps. Um, but um, I mean, it's essentially another thing that I do and I can, you know, really to some extent only talk about, like I've tried lots and lots of things. Um, a lot of people, it's good to try all variety of things. And I'm, I'm a big believer that I don't care if it's traditional or alternative or wacky. Like if you tell me to slap fish on top of my head, you know what, I will give it a go um, and then see if it works. So, you know, definitely measure your progress no matter what, you know, technique you try. And ultimately it's about finding something that's sustainable because that's the key. You know, like if it's, um, now not everything needs to be, like, you know, you might do what I just said for a few months and go, you know what, that's all I need of that and then find something else. You know, people like tap their fears away. It's a really sort of in thing. Um, you know, I haven't really done the, the tapping thing um, you know, talking to other people can be really useful because, you know, sometimes we don't know what we're thinking and believing till it comes, you know, out of our mouth. 
Um, there's a variety of stuff, but I like to look at it also from, I forget what book it's from. Again, I'm terrible with remembering where I get stuff. Um, I kind of, you know, trust that my brain pulls the things I need to talk about when, the, when I need to talk about them. But there's these uh, 12 mind powers and I just find them so useful for helping me stay on track because to me these 12 mind powers cover every aspect of sort of your mind, right? So the way that I remember them is with the acronyms and it's not mine, I didn't invent this, but um, it's lip Jews flows right so there's 12 of them so I'll try to remember them all off the top of my head so um, lip the L is life right the mind power of life and the theory goes that they're located at different parts in your body like you you don't just have a mind in your head you have a mind elsewhere um, science has now officially discovered that there are brain cells in the human heart um, and in the gut um, so who knows where else there are brain cells? So, you know, your mind isn't just what's going on up here. It's your whole physiology. But life is um, essentially about asking myself every day, um, am I open to the creativity which is life? You know, life is one big amazing creation. And, you know, coming back to writing, there's like, 50 trillion billion gazillion stories floating out there right and um and i want to be open and receptive and you know living my life to the fullest and actually open to creating because ultimately we're all creatives we love the joy of creating something new and the life also reminds me that everything we create is good like there is no bad creation so you know like just create it. Don't worry about if it's good, bad, right, wrong. Just begin with the L. So then the I is imagination. And um, imagination is found in your head. But it, imagination isn't just about making stuff up. In fact, I would argue that imagination is saying that um, the universe, God, whatever you believe in, that thing out there, life, is wanting to bring something through you to life. You know, like, so actually when you tap into your imagination, you're kind of putting your hand up and going, okay, I'll do that project. You know, like, I'll write that one. That one sounds like it's mine. Um, and then it, it actually flows through you, like imagination. I used to think I can't be a fiction author because I can't think up cool stuff, right? I'm not so creative as that. Um, but when I started to open my mind power of imagination, I realized that there's an infinite amount of imaginary imaginary stuff waiting to be born so imagination and then the p which is in the lip is the mind power of power um, which is in the throat and it's important that we speak good things about ourselves that we say positive things about ourselves it's probably my one weakness which is why i've always got throat issues um, you know like but recognizing that allows me to actually be kind to myself to actually, you know, stop for a moment and say, Eleanor, say nice things about yourself today and um, start saying, you know, my writing is awesome. Like, it's, you know, my, my author voice. It's my voice. Like, own it. It's great. It's not like everybody else's, but it's mine. So, you know, the power of, of voice is in, you know, the power, mind power. So that's lip. Oh, there's still so many to go. Um, so, you know, Jews, the J is judgment. Oh, my gosh, such a big one. And judgment is in the stomach, which, you know, I would argue, being a, um, you know, holistic person, that that's why so many people have stomach issues because it's a very, we're very judgmental of ourselves and of others. And it reminds me not to allow my critical voice to play such a big part when I'm trying to create because it's harsh like oh it's the things it says while I'm trying to write a story it's like cruel um and even though you know I'll read other people's stories and I'll be like oh I didn't like that bit and I'm like whoa you know like that's that person's creation you know it doesn't mean you can't be discerning it just means to watch out for judgment because automatically that's now going to limit your mindset, right? So yeah. judgment. The you of the Jews is 
divine like understanding it's that that, that higher understanding of realizing the gut feeling and you when a story like needs old you're actually just hearing the goes through the podcasts and going oh such and such did facebook ads so now i'm going to spend six hundred dollars doing them you know understanding is there for you to actually kind of tune in we all have that ability some people say we don't but i always remind myself it's amazing how intuitive we are when we're driving like we know what that other driver is going to do don't we? Like we know, oh, I knew that was going to happen and I doubted that. Life is exactly the same. So the mind power of understanding and actually having that intuition is also a critical part of mindset. The Z is zeal, which is a very old-fashioned word, but another a version of zeal is enthusiasm and it's meant to be in the neck. So, you know, when people get a stiff neck or they're not, you know, they're like in... in Enthusiasm is a Greek word which means like entheos, because I am Greek. Um, entheos means to be in God. And God, not religiously, but God is a creative force. Again, thinking about like God is, if nothing else, just creativity. The earth and human beings were created, right? When you're in your enthusiasm you're in your creative spark you're in your joy you're actually doing what you you know like it's just it's joyful like you don't want to do anything except for bring this story to life and entertain yourself and another child right so you know when you're in joy that's wonderful that's what the um z is of juice the e of juice is elimination which is in the bowels which is about if you're doing everything in joy then anything that is not in joy you eliminate like why are you doing that thing right like you know if you're not enjoying being on social media like why are you doing that because someone told you you had to uh, someone told you you had to write a series of books. Sure, they might have great success, but you could also write 50 standalone titles that might work better for you, right? So if it's not joyful for you, um, I know it's really trendy to write to market and all of that sort of stuff, and it certainly it can work, but there's a lot of times it doesn't work. Again, we don't look sometimes, we don't interview these people and say, how come your series worked? And your series didn't work, right? I, I bet if I went through the 12 mind powers, I would find the whole, you know, like I would find the weak link. So um, it reveals it. It's, it's fascinating how the 12 mind powers kind of cover everything. So that's lip and juice, and then we're left with flows. So the F is faith. You know, you have to have faith in yourself, even when evidence doesn't appear. You know, when you first started, when I first started, we were like, is anybody going to buy our book? You know, I have I have friend authors, you know, local friend authors who hopefully don't listen to this podcast. Um, <laughs> I'm not naming them. But, um, you know, they, they, you know, put their book up and, you know, one of them said to me, one of them in particular said, um, you know, I, I'm going to wait until I get discovered. And I'm like, okay. Um, do you think that'll happen? Mm, probably not. So what's the point of doing anything? You know, like she didn't have like faith in herself, you know, like that, that she could, she said, it's too hard. I can't do marketing. I can't do any of this stuff. None of us can, but something in us has faith that if we continue on the path that, you know, eventually it will start, it will work. It will work. Otherwise we wouldn't wake up tomorrow and keep writing children's books. Um, even though it's the worst genre, whatever, to be in. It's, it's not. It's just we, we, have, we have faith, don't we, that somehow it's going to pay off. We wouldn't have a calling to do it otherwise. I truly believe that. So, so that's the F of the flows. The L is love, right? Pure and simple. It has to be in there. Unconditional love. Love for ourselves, our stories. You know, like I know when I first put out the first story, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's sort of good. I like it, kind of. And, you know, it took a shift for me to go, I love my stories. I love mm. them. And they're like my children. I unconditionally love them. And that likewise will attract readers who love them. Not everyone's going to love them, but not everybody loves my children. 
right? So <laughs> that's normal. <laughs> it's totally normal. Um, and it's recognizing that that love is a piece. Because when somebody picks up your book and you've written it in love it, and it still has that energy of love in it, it's a very different feel is when you pick up that sort of put it back, you know, like it's it's coming through. Um, I'm almost there. So I've got two more letters to go. So the W, which is will. Will. You have to will yourself, right? Will is action. If you don't action, um, I'm going to rewind. We're going to go. I must have missed it for. All right. There has to be some order to what you're doing. Like you'll you'll notice people that are completely disorganized, right? Like now some people appear to be disorganized, but there's an order to their madness, right? Mm -hmm. But like you should see the sticky note. <laughs> That's all around me right now. It's <laughs> right, but you you know you'll notice in yourself the times where you're out of order, like you've literally lost the plot, right? Everything goes haywire, and when there's some level of order, and you know order coming back to publishing and writing, you know there's a little bit of a plan. There's a little bit of I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. Like you're not just sort of doing everything and hoping something sticks. Um, so order is important and then the will um, and they come in this order for a very particular order in other words like it is lip juice flows in that order because one must be done before the other one can be done um, right so so you can't do them randomly because there's no order in that right um, so the W is will now you can take action and you know what now your action is going to lead to some great results now, if you don't have order, if you don't have faith, I'm just picking them at random, right? Like um, um, you don't have, you're not connected to life and the stories that want to come through you, just writing anything like because you think that's what will work. Um, you can take all the action in the world. It's not going to lead to anything. So, you know, action on its own when you're not congruent with those other mind powers, mindset elements, isn't going to lead to much, but if those things are in order now, when you take action, it's um it's very kind of measured action to some extent, right? It's got you've got faith in it. It feels right intuitively. Feels good, um you know, like we bought the course, right? Something told us by that course. We now do the things in the course. They start to work. Some people are all over the place. They're anxious. They think they're not going to sell anything, so they buy the course out of fear and they take the action. And there's you know heaps of people, for example, you know in our um, in some of our courses that are like, nothing works, nothing's working, everything's not working. And then someone will come in and be like, oh, so glad I bought this. Everything works, <laughs> right? Um, and, and you can tell. I mean, I can feel almost like the energy of that person is doing some of these things, like maybe not in the exact order, but they're still there. Um, and finally, lucky last, is strength, the mind power of strength, which is in the lower back. And, you know, strength is having that courage, you know, like it, you are going to have to step out and do some stuff that feel um, risky. I mean, even writing something and putting it out is, takes, takes strength. You know, like the studies now show that, uh, I saw this on a TED Talk again. I forgot who it is, but um, it was a TED Talk. If I can find it, I will put it in the show notes was talking about the number one predictor of success now is tenacity, right? Do you have the tenacity, that strength to stay with it? Like, you, you know, if you now write to me, please don't, and say, I did the mind powers in that order, like I made sure that I was doing everything in order for a week, right, and it didn't work. Right, like it's it's got to be that tenacity, that strength to keep it going, even in the face of what doesn't appear to be working initially. It's going to take some time. So, so I feel like the whole thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give you a break from talking so that you can like take a swallow <laughs> of water or something. But like, I feel like oh, yeah. um, that the whole thing kind of resonates with me. But like the ending point there, I feel like what is my like starting, and I'm not saying that like I'm like evolved or anything, but like the, your literal ending point was my literal starting point um, 
on this journey, I saw a TED talk of an amazing woman whose name I cannot remember, but we can find it and put it in the show notes where um, essentially the message of it was your life is now. And that's so simple and it should not have felt so deep and resonant for me, but it really really was. My life is happening now. Like I'm not preparing myself for some future life that I'm going to live someday. It's it's right now. <laughs> and um, so then for me, that was like a huge motivator in being like, okay, so what is my life supposed to be like? What's the life that I'm supposed to be living? And how can I be living it now? Because maybe I'm not even going to be here tomorrow. Like I, I, um, want to be able to have as much of this like vague future life that I've been planning today as possible. And um, so then it's really interesting. Um, uh, it's really interesting hearing all of that. Like, if, oh, no, go ahead. You had, go ahead. Um, the life that you have, right? The absolute, the real life you'd love to have. Do you today? in the now, right, believe it will be yours. Not it's possible, listen to my question. Do you believe it will be yours and it will be your now? Sense like it's not now, but it will eventually absolutely be your now. Absolutely. No, no, I, I absolutely. And for me, that that has more to do, like that makes me think, okay, now I have a plan. I think I'm a plan person. Um, so then I'm like, okay, yes. Um, I absolutely think that. And for me, that makes me plan differently. Like it makes me accept some things and then um, uh, exclude other things. It, it helps me prioritize things. My sister-in-law, or actually both of my sisters-in-law are really, um, and my mother-in-law, are really big into um, vision boarding, particularly at the start of the year. And the my husband is not so much into it. He 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 has a, an interesting relationship with the concept, I think. But um, for I did it the first year with them, and. I was, I'm not going to say necessarily, I was definitely open, but skeptical. Do you know what I mean? Like to the, yeah. the idea, um, because I'm like, this is not magic. Clearly it's not magic. Like it's like, how is that going to do a thing? Right. Um, and I don't know, maybe it is magic. I'm not discounting magic. Um, I like to write about it a lot. So then, you know, that'll, that can be maybe a real thing that's happening out there. But um, I think for me, what I realized is that, the vision board helps me to think about, prioritize, and act upon the things that I want in the now. So whether or not there is anything bigger happening around it, I know for sure that that's happening. I know for sure that that is concrete and that um, it's something that drives me forward and also keeps me in the present. Like when I'm being all like, blah, 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 blah. I know that spending really quality time with my children is a part of my like uh, chosen present. Like this is a part of my chosen life. And so then um, having that in front of me reminds me to stop and actually do it. They're here. They're adorable. <laughs> like they're never going to be the spot that they are again. And that was a thing that I actively wanted in my life. And so um, uh, I know that at least it does that, that much of it. And um, it's really interesting to watch other people, like after having like sat with people who are like, sort of developing their vision for the next year or the next two years in one space. And, and so then like to be there to like see it as a plan and then to see it happening in the world, like it's, it feels like magic, even though I, I, like a big part of me is like, mm, they're doing a lot of actions to make sure that that's happening. It's not like they're just like hanging out at home watching yeah. Netflix and people are just like handing them stuff. But you know what I mean? Like it still feels um, like seeing things come to fruition, seeing positive things come to fruition is um, uh, like, I feel like it feeds into the cycle again, which for me then um, 
says like selfishly, like a, a selfish reason to want to be able to have this kind of conversation. I feel like the more of us that there are out there who are really um, positive and actively seeking the positive, um, the better it will be for all of us. Is, like, I feel like that's what you were saying from the beginning. And, and like, maybe I just negated the whole conversation by like <laughs> <laughs> saying that again in the end, but, um, uh, but yeah, no, that was like really, really helpful for me, Elena. Yeah. And likewise, you know, there, it's also important that we be real. So sometimes, you know, one of us, any one of us is going to like dive and sometimes there's no, there's no even reason for that. You know, it just, I don't know, the weather, like something, like sometimes it's something we don't even know, um, dives us. It's, you know, important for the rest of us to then support and, and pick that person up, you know, like that's also part of it and not be frightened. It's giving yourself permission to sometimes have those dark nights of the soul. Um, in the music world, and I'm not musical, but my family is, um, I'm probably not going to explain this properly, but the way that I remember it is that before the perfect harmony comes together, there's chaos, you know, and the, the world apparently before it came into absolute harmony, there's chaos. So chaos has to precede harmony, you know, uh, chaos has to happen when there's change, you know, you can't, um, you have to unearth, you know, dig up the footing of the old house before you can put in the new foundations of the new house. So, yeah. For that, I always use the clean out your closets phenomenon. Like there's the point when you're like cleaning and organizing the drawers and, and closets in your space where you've taken everything out and you look around and you're like, holy moly, what did I do here? This is a way worse than it was before I started this whole process. But then you can see everything. You throw out the stuff that you don't need. And when it goes back in the drawers, it's like so much better than it was before. That's that's how I always think yeah. of that. Yeah. And you see it in, you know, in Facebook groups, you'll see like one author will be like, oh, that's it. You know, I quit or it's not going good. And everyone else will come in and be like, you know, don't worry about it. It's a bad day. Like, <laughs> you know, like, um, um, and, you know, sharing our successes um, is, is designed to let the rest of us know what's possible. Um, we've all got jealousy issues. <laughs> we all have jealousy issues. But, um, you know, I like to look at, at envy or jealousy as um, actually showing me what I want. In other words, if I'm jealous or there's part of me that goes ouch you know like you sold a lot of books that means i want to sell a lot of books right um because actually the hardest part of everything that i've just said if you wouldn't think so but the hardest part is knowing what you want right i, I do that's the I, I believe you like i absolutely believe you and because before you actually know what you want you're probably working in a direction and you're working really hard and you feel like no matter what i do i'm not getting the thing that i want because you yeah. you're you're not working towards it because you're not like fully cognizant of what it is yet like i i i can totally i can totally see that and i also see your point about like um jealousy being a good pointer toward a thing that you like telling you like the thing that that's that that's the thing that you want um i remember um a really good friend of mine from uh college um and i had like we were really good friends in college but then we didn't uh w like we hadn't talked in, in a really long time and when we finally did like um have a conversation again i remember um her being like so jealous that i um was married and had children and um i couldn't understand it right because and i was like trying to explain this to um another like a coworker of mine at the time i was like i just really don't get like why she i was like it seems like such happenstance like you know it's not like an accomplishment like having like it's like it, it was like yeah i happened to stumble across like the person that I want to be with. That's not like I didn't, that's not like an active thing that I did. Meanwhile, she was a published and 
pretty successful author at the time. And I was like, but here she's actively done a thing and it's amazing. And I'm totally jealous of that thing. And I don't know why, <laughs> like, why would she be jealous of my thing? Like, but really like we were showing each other the thing that we really <laughs> wanted, which is like perfect, which is perfect. Yeah. yeah, which is kind of perfect. So even though you hate each other in that minute, actually you were, it was the perfect person, right? To <laughs> To, to show the bits that are missing. You know, like everyone will have one area of life that seems to be their challenge. It'll be the one they sort of talk about the most when you get together with them. You know, the one who's got relationship problems or the one that's got career problems or the one that's got health problems or, you know, whatever. Um, because sometimes the very thing you want the most seems to be held out on you. Like it seems to, like you want it so bad and it's like the universe goes, nah. And then almost like when you go, oh, stuff it. I don't want it anymore, right? Just forget about it. Then it comes. So there's such a thing as sort of wanting it almost too much, you know, like to the point where you're sort of obsessive because what, that's, what's, what that really is saying is I'm scared shitless I'm not going to get it, right? Like I'm so desperate, like I'm so obsessed, like I'm checking the stats every five seconds right? Because like, did I sell a book? Did I sell a book? Deep down, what's going on is I really don't think that I'm going to get what I want, right? So again, you just have to have that awareness that you're meant to be quite relaxed and be able to let go. Like again, one of the things that I do every morning is, um, and my morning sounds very busy, but um, I will um, take all the things that I think I want, right? And put them so that they can be on you know for me i said you don't have to be but i say dear god here take my life right here are my gifts talents and abilities you tell me where to go you tell me what to do you tell me what you want for me like here it is and and it'll and it'll come you know like it it that which is really meant for you will always come back for you. Like it never goes away. Like I remember this, um, this one author who, you know, ch uh, channels or speaks to angels, which, you know, is out there, but she was um, Doreen Virtue. She's quite sort of famous. She's the angel lady. And um, she's really, you know, uplifting and positive. You know, from my perspective, I couldn't care less if angels are real or not, but I ask myself, does believing in them today make my life better? And sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Well, she has this story where she was, you know, she had two kids and um, she had, I think her husband, she ended up getting divorced, but she's overweight, two kids, didn't finish high school, and she kept being shown visions of writing books and being on stage and it would freak her out and it wouldn't go away no matter how much she tried so she used to hide in her cupboard and eat cook chocolate chip cookies to make the vision stop <laughs> it's the funniest story right um and they wouldn't anyway now of course she's a you know she's got i don't know how many books like a huge amount of books she's hugely famous she went from being you know like a psychologist to being this woo-woo angel lady and, it, and she was scared, right? But that's what kept coming for her, right? And she's now been very, very successful listening to herself. The thing that's really meant for you will not go away. You can decide you're not writing kids' books anymore if that feels right for you. If they turn up again, they'll turn up again. So sometimes, you know, don't be frightened to let go of your dreams because if they're really yours, they'll, they'll come back for you as well. And that's, you know, it just as equally important as everything else. But the what you want thing is, um, you know, is a tricky one. And it's it's a life lesson, like all things. You know, I grew up and wanted to be famous. That's all I wanted. I didn't care about money. I just wanted the fame. And then I, um, I got an opportunity to go and work in Japan. And, you know, believe it or not, I'm a celebrity over there. Um, not in all of Japan. But, you know, when, um, when I turn up to Japan, it's like, woo, you know, like, and I remember coming back and going, hmm, God, I really thought I wanted that. But it just, it didn't actually feel like I thought it was going to feel. Fame is really overrated, <laughs> right? 
and it, it took that experience. So then I went, you know what, take fame off the board, <laughs> right? Take fame off my vision board. But I had to experience that to know that. So again, don't be hard on yourself if you think you want something when you get it you don't enjoy it as much as you thought you were going to enjoy it right so yeah yeah i think that um this has been really helpful and i think that we or at least for me i can obviously i cannot speak for like everyone who's out there um but um i think that i would be really interested to hear what other people's thoughts are on this topic and a thing that we haven't really strongly encouraged on the show is for people to go and um, leave us comments um, either on the uh, YouTube videos or on the podcast page. Um, but I think that this is one that uh, we should really like try to hear from people on and um, steer our people towards the um, the the comments sections um so that we can have a longer conversation about this so um if you have a thought about this um and um feel like you want to add it in then um if you're watching on youtube then obviously you can probably see the comment square below um but um if you are um listening on itunes or stitcher or some other listening apparatus, SoundCloud, I don't know, there's a lot of things out there, um, then probably the best place is at our website. And I think I said it wrong last time, so I'm going to ask Elena to say it this time. <laughs> Indie Kidlit Podcast. Dot com. No, no, the like it's no, that's what I did. Podcast, right? it's just, it's <laughs> yeah, it's easy. Podcast. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so very cool. So, thank you so much for sharing this time with me and all of your expertise on this, Elena. I don't know that everybody do um how uh much this is a part of your the other part of your life you talk about yourself a lot of times as a novice in the indie kidlet space which is true but um you're bringing like a world of information um along with you into this uh novice role that you've taken on so i really appreciate you sharing some of your expertise today you're welcome and i just i just want to finish the show with one last little piece of advice and that is sure. remind yourself that a growth mindset right ha tries things it doesn't um like you'll be tempted to you know like just like you are when you listen to any other podcast and listen to marketing stuff right you'll be like no that's not for me um or you know that is for me the only way to know what's for you is to try stuff and again it doesn't matter if you're slapping fish you do it did it do anything? No, I'm not going to slap fish again, right? Like, um, because sometimes you'll be surprised what works for you and what doesn't. And the only way to know is to try it and to try it for long enough so that and measure the results, right? Like you don't do Facebook ads for a day and go, nah, doesn't work. So it's the same with mindset principles. Like there's so much stuff out there and a million different ways and techniques um, you know, like if you want to do the lip juice flows, sit down with a, a couple, you know, once a week and just, you know, write them out and say, how, how am I on the life thing? How am I going? What would I give myself? Mm, eight out of 10, got a bit of work to doing that, you know, and, and go through that and see if that gives you useful information. Change that stuff and then see, are you different? You know, like did, did it actually change how you do things? Um, they say that it takes 21 days to make a change, but actually in reality, it's more like about 60 days. So that's kind of a, again, it's a bit of a new age myth, this whole like change your life in 21 days. Um, not really sort of realistic, like the human brain's a bit um, stubborn and, you know, like our reptilian brain doesn't like change, like it wants to stay safe. Um, so you have to kind of push yourself a little to try different things. If you keep doing the same things, you'll keep getting the same results. If you keep thinking the same ways, you'll keep getting the same results. And the number one thing you can change, and then I will not talk anymore, I promise, is your thinking. Thanks, Marty. 
Thank you. That was a really good spot for us to end on. The number one thing you can change is your thinking. And it's, a, it's, it's good. <laughs> and don't be embarrassed when your thinking is bad. You'll hear my thinking be bad all the time because we're all, you know, works in progress and everything goes in cycles. So you're, you're not actually improving yourself in an upwards climb. You're actually mm -hmm. improving yourself in a, um, in a cycle, you know, like the, it'll come again. It'll mm -hmm. come and see, did you really mean what you said when you were going to stay positive when you knew your new book launched and nobody bought it? Did you mean that? Right? Like it's, it's, it's cyclical. So you don't sort of, you know, enlighten yourself and then you're like a guru. It's, that's not actually realistic. It's all comes in cycles. So be kind to yourself and others. Very cool. Thank you, Elena. Take care.